I've been laughing at Tracy this whole thing. I said, it's going to be a miracle of God if you get all the pieces of the puzzle back. She said, well, if they're minus a piece, then that's just the piece that the person who was supposed to be here is not here. We need to pray them in. So, so does everybody got your pieces for Laura and got your name on there? I'm just glad I don't have to put it together. Never was good at that. Okay, y'all just keep writing and whatever, but we're going to get, I got to get started. I'm going to be long-winded, I could tell. Um, so, I've been preaching these last several weeks about the laws of God and about different things that, that we, don't, we just take for granted. You know, like even, in, even in, on natural laws, like the law of gravity, the law of lift, you know, the law of different laws that take place, things that we do all the time that you don't even think about, you know? It's hunting season, you're sighting your rifle in, and you're, you're setting all your, your sights, and you've got your ballistic chart out, and you're looking at how much your bullet's going to drop, you know how fast it's going, and you know how many grains of powder you got in there, you know the weight of your bullet, you know where it should hit. And all of that is because there's certain laws in effect. The bullet's going to have so much drag on it. The, 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 the bullet's going to have so much drop because the law of gravity is in effect. And you have to figure all of these things in. But then when we get into the things of God, we just kind of just free willy, just kind of go out there and just do whatever we, we think God wants, wants or whatever we've learned from whatever. And, you know, it's not right sometimes. Hello? Look at the person beside you and say, I might not be right. Because, you know, we learn things. I remember, listen to me, I remember when I was in school, like the fifth grade, somewhere along there, fifth grade health, I remember the teacher telling me that everybody to look at the veins on your arm and you can see the, 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 that they're blue and the blood in your veins is blue until it comes to exposed to oxygen and then it turns red. I was taught that in fifth grade. Y'all are all sitting there looking at me like, what? What school did you go to? I went to the you know, normal public school. And I can remember that because I always thought, that is so weird. It's blue and then it turns out that. And then come to find out, you know, years later, that was wrong. Right? But they thought that was truth then. But it wasn't truth. But they were teaching it as truth, but it wasn't truth. I mean, my Lord, I'm so sick of everything. You go, you know, you look at the internet, and one day, you're, you, you, oh my God, if you drink a cup of coffee, you're killing yourself. You've shortened your life. Oh my God, you're not going to live. You didn't drink coffee, did you? That's what it looks like. And then the next day, you look at it, and they said, oh, no. We've actually found out that if you drink a cup of coffee, that it actually does this for you, and it actually helps you. And I'm like, well, who's right? You got these people screaming, don't drink. These over here that say, do. You know what I mean? Y'all with me? And it's hard to find truth in life. Because there's so many people with so many varied things out there saying this and that and the other. And it's hard to find truth. And sometimes in life, we apply things to our life thinking it's going to bring about a good result. And it doesn't. And what typically happens is everybody just turns and blames it on God. Rather than finding out, are we operating in the right principles that are laid down and set down from before the foundation of this world ever was, that was laid down by God, and what are we doing to cooperate with those principles? If you're fighting the law of gravity all the time, folks, listen to me, you're, you're, you're not going to win. And if you're fighting a law that God's already got established in your life, well, you cannot expect a different result it's going to happen the same way every time. So if you're not having your prayers answered, if you're not having fellowship with God, if you're not seeing a, a vibrant uh, result of living for him, well, then, folks, there's something you've got to change. You've got to figure it out. And so that's what this whole message has been about. And I can't review over everything. And, and, uh, but there's, God has put in place principles that are going to work. And so today I want to look at three more. It's the law of truth, the law of word, and the law of spiritual authority. All three of these, these, these principles all work together in our lives, okay? So get your Bibles out and go to Hebrews chapter 6. And I want to look at the first off, the law of truth. 
Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. Hebrews 6, 13 says this, For when God made a promise to Abraham, he could swear by no greater, so he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessings I will bless you, and multiply I will multiply you. So after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end to all dispute. Thus God determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel. Confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for a refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Okay, he says it's two things here it happened. One of them is it's impossible for God to lie. The second one is, is that he took an oath. All right. Now, it is impossible for God to lie. Can I have an amen? The Bible says that if God lied, he would cease to exist. So the only place you're ever going to find truth is from the one who can't lie. Pilate said to Jesus, when, when, and he said, uh, talked about truth, and Pilate said, well, what's truth? Yeah, because it, you're, and you're looking on today's world, it's what he said and what they said, you know. It's just back and forth. But when God can't lie, then that means... Wait a minute. He, only truth is going to come from him. Hello? There's no other place you can find truth except the word of God. You say, well, pastor, that doesn't make sense because men go in there and they interpret it all different. You got different, different denominations and you're pulling this way and that way and this and says this and that. And says, yeah, that's because men are stupid. That's because people go out there and want to invent their own doctrines or whatever they want to believe. But if you take the Bible... And you read the Bible, and you read, and you learn, and you read it till you learn the spirit of what the Word of God is saying, and you get it down to the point to where you can can tell if it's the voice of God or not. Like, like, I know my father-in-law really well. Okay, and if somebody came to me and said, "Did you know that that Bill Schaefer did this or that?" And if that wasn't the man I knew, that wasn't of his character, because I really know him. I would say, what? Yeah, we caught him down there stealing. And I would first question, ask, were you talking about he was at the dump? <laughs> That'd be the first question I'd ask, because he goes over there and gets stuff out of the junk pile all the time, man. And that ain't count as stealing, but, you know, is that what you were talking about? No, he's down there at the store. Caught him shoplifting. I said, that. I said, either Bill's off on meds or something, because that is not his character. He is not a thief. Y'all with me? See, people don't learn God like that. They don't read through their Bible enough to know what God would do or not do. And so they don't know him well enough. So when somebody says, oh, well, you know, God was mad, sent in a hurricane, tried to kill everybody down Texas coast, mad at him. And you're like, what? That doesn't sound like my God. That doesn't fit in there. Why? Because you knew him. You knew what his truth was. You knew what his spirit was. You knew from, from that, that he's a man, he's a God that he doesn't lie, okay? And if he said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Y'all with me? And so, but you got to know what it, you got to know him before you're going to know what, if, if what he says right or not. Hello? So God swore to Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you. Well, then Abraham got a big smile on his face because he knew it was impossible for God to lie. So he said, wow, I'm blessed. And then the Bible goes on and says Abraham was wealthy and rich, and cattle, gold, and silver. Right? Now, see, the problem is today we don't know what to take God for because it's just like the Internet. You're going to look on it one day, you're going to think, you're going to hear one preacher, you're going to learn one thing, and then you're going to hear another preacher, you're going to learn something else. And so if you don't know what the Bible says, you're not ever going to know what really truth is. But you've got to get the whole counsel of God's word. And this is what people don't do. They like to pick and choose. Oh, I could get me some good doctrines if I could just pick and choose. Oh, I could come up some dandies, man. I could twist it around, you know. And... But anyway. In Genesis 1.1, it says that in the beginning, right, what was there was darkness over the face of the earth. Right? And then the Spirit of God came and he hovered over the face of the earth. And then God said, let there be light. And then there was light, right? 
in our lives, it's like that. There's, we, get, we get places that there's darkness within our lives. We get places in our lives that we're not thinking straight. We're not, we're not listening to what the Spirit of God is really saying. We don't know. There's darkness. It's clouded. But what we need is the Holy Spirit to come and hover over our life and then hear God say, because when you hear God say, it sets you free. When you hear God say something, then it turns your whole life around. Whether you heard him say it through a scripture you read, through, through a, the preaching message, through a song. The song she just sang, new song. You are good. You are good. Man, all of a sudden that hits somebody. Like, oh, man, that's right. God's good. He's not bad. And that really hits you and it becomes a revelation to you. It's just like God speaking over the darkness of the earth and poo, light came. Then all of a sudden, you're not in darkness anymore. Then all of a sudden, things start making sense. Romans 4, 17. He says, he's the God that calls things that do not exist as though they did. Now, that sounds crazy because we don't do that. We humans over here, we believe it when we see it. But God's not that kind of God. God's a God that's not going to lie. And so he just calls things into existence. There's no light, so he says, light be. In your life, there may be no peace. But I want to show you about the law of words. And I want to show you about the law of spiritual authority. I'm telling you what, if you start to say peace in your life and you start to speak peace in life and start to learn God, peace will start to come in your life. Because God's a God that calls things that be not as though they were. He calls things into existence. God's a God who looks at your potential. He doesn't look at your failure. One of the most amazing scriptures to me is the little bitty book of Jude, right before you get to Revelation. And in verse 24, it says that God's going to present you, you. Let me, let me paraphrase it. Jesus is going to present you before the Father, faultless and blameless with exceeding joy. Now, do you think about that for a minute? He's going to take you up there faultless when all we ever do is think about our faults. And Jesus is going to present you faultless and blameless before the Father, and he's going to have joy about it. That blows my mind. Because it's like, We look at our faults. We hinder ourselves in life from walking because we're always looking at our faults. And then we look at everybody else's faults, and then we judge everybody else, and so we just get ourselves in a big mess all the time. But God, Jesus is going to walk you up there and say, Man, here's Laura. God, I brought her up here. Woo! See, he's happy. He's excited. He's got joy. And he's presenting you. Look, she's faultless and she's blameless. And see, some of y'all may say, well, you know, that's maybe right. I mean, she's kind of quiet and sweet. But I'm telling you, it's not the truth. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. She talks plenty. But are you with me? Do you realize? I mean, let me ask you this. If right now you were going to go before Father God, would there be a twinge in the back of your mind that thinking that maybe something might get revealed that you didn't really want brought out in the middle of a myriad of Christians standing before the throne? When they're going to play the video of your life back, you're like, oh, God. Hope that's, oh. I still have cringes in my life when I hear somebody say, Robert? Robert Richards, is that you? I just go, ooh. (laughs) Who is it? Oh, God. But he's going to present you faultless and blameless? How does he do that? Just think about it. How does he do that? I could say blameless. Oh, yeah, because let's just say he doesn't, doesn't, you know, uh, require anything of it he just he doesn't have any standard like i said if there's you could not get stopped by a cop for speeding if there was no not a speed limit b 
but faultless? You never did anything wrong? Whew. But God's a God that he can't lie. So I'm telling you, that's the truth. Hear what I'm saying? I don't care if you don't believe it, you're wrong because that's the truth because it's impossible for God to lie. So if God says, I'm going to present you faultless and blameless before my presence with exceeding joy, he's going to do it. And if you believe unlike that, you're in error. And this is where we get in trouble. Because instead of us walking... In truth, under the law of truth, we walk in error. And we let the enemy come against us and use our errors so that we miss the mark. Because if you're sitting here this morning and there's any guilt or condemnation in your life and you have repented of it and you've asked God to forgive you for it, but you still feel guilty for it, then I want to tell you something you've not really truly walk through you need to go to freedom prayer because you haven't really gotten free from whatever that problem was because God's looking at you under the blood faultless unblameable unreprovable in the sights what Colossians 1:22 says I know Robert but it's just hard to do I just don't understand okay I'll give it to you be miserable but don't think you're going to ever hit the mark And don't get mad at God because you didn't hit the mark. Look at the person beside you and say, man, I just love it when he just beats me up like this. I mean, we could come in here and I could give you some little namby-pamby sermon and, you know, and tell you all how sweet it all is and how sweet the dew is that comes down from Mount Hermon upon the children of God. say some sort of prayer that you don't even really understand and puts lots of these and thous in it and act like yeah, I really had something going and then we all stand up and sing the doxology and go home. And... But I, I ain't going to help you. I want to help you all. I want you all to understand the law of truth. If you get the law of truth down inside of your heart of what God's word says about you, man, it changes you. You really truly become the Psalms 18, a person that can run through a troop, a person that can leap over a wall. That's what Psalms 18 says. That because God's with you, you can do that. But see, you say, well, I don't know. Just, you know, I just don't know if I believe that or not. Okay. Again, I'll give it to you. Don't believe it. But you're not going to walk in truth. And that, that error that you're living in, It's going to cause you to always be missing the mark. And it's not God's fault. It's our fault. Okay. Hebrews 4.12. Scripture you ought to have memorized. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is living and it's powerful. Okay. The word of God is living and it's powerful. Everybody say that with me. Say, the word of God is living and is powerful. Okay, do it again. The Word of God is living, is powerful. The Word of God is living and it's powerful. The Word of God is not just ink printed on a page. It's not that this Bible in itself is holy. It's not, a, not that, it's not that this, this object is holy. It's that what it says has the ability to leap off of the page and into your heart and change your life. It's not the object that makes it holy. It says Holy Bible, but it's not the object, but it's what the object says. It's what's said inside of here, what's on that print. That it has the ability to come off and it has the ability to leap into your heart. And when you feel guilty, all of a sudden you feel clean because the word went into you and changed your life. Hello. The world right now is trying to push upon everybody the acceptance of whatever they state is right. But the truth is, you cannot walk in anything except what is truth. Because everything else is a lie.
It's the word of God that's so powerful. It's so, it's so living and powerful. And it says it's sharp, right? It's like a two-edged sword. It's sharp. And it can discern the thoughts of anything. It can get down to when you're just thinking crazy or you're off over in left field or whatever's going on in life. It's the word. Why? Because it's the law of truth. Truth will always prevail. Truth will always prevail. I don't care what's going to happen. I don't care what's going on. I don't care all the craziness that's going on in the world right now. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on right now, folks. I don't know if you're watching the news, but there is some crazy stuff going on right now. And, and it's, like, it's like, to me, I just think it's all God. I just think God's orchestrating the whole thing, to be honest with you. I think it's just God just revealing all the darkness that has been in people's hearts. I think the people that are standing around pointing the finger, they're the bad people. All of a sudden, they're being revealed that they're really the bad people, you know? It's, just, it's pretty hilarious to me. It's really the proverb that says, when you roll the rock, be careful because the rock's going to roll back on you. When you dig a hole, be careful. You're going to fall into it. And that's really what's happening now. And so anyway, nothing's going to prevail but truth. You've got to understand that. That's why we've got to have truth. If you don't have truth in your life, the enemy is always going to have a, a vantage point to get you to miss a mark. Amen? Okay, so let me just go on to this. Okay, so the next one that goes right along with this, truth, is the law of words. The law of words. Go to Luke 6.43. Luke 6.43 says, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you really want to know what's in somebody's heart, listen to what they say out of their mouth. Christian, non-Christian, don't make any difference. Just listen to what comes out of their mouth. Because there's a law here. There's a law in effect that God says is called the law of words. And if you want to know what's in somebody's heart, just listen to what comes out of their mouth. It doesn't make any difference if they're saved or not. The law of God is in effect. He said a good tree is not going to produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. Just listen. Just listen. And you'll know what's in a person's heart. That's all you got to do. All right? Some of y'all are saying, uh oh. Anyway, Proverbs 21 23 says, Whoever guards his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from trouble. I preached on this on a Wednesday night. Basically, is the trouble in your soul came out of your mouth. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, that scripture is one of those Christian cliches, you know, that we always throw out. There. Oh, yeah, death and life is in the power of the tongue. But nobody ever listens and nobody ever does anything about it. But the second part of that verse says... And those who love it will eat its fruit. And those who love it will eat its fruit. You see, folks, listen. If somebody is saying something and you really want to know if they're good or bad, just listen to what's coming out of their mouth. That goes with preachers. That goes with heathen friends. Don't make any difference. Just listen to what's coming out of their mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is always going to speak. No matter what. Now, people can put on a show for a little bit. But if you get around them and hang around them enough, eventually they're going to, cat's going to get out of the bag. <laughs> right? A cat's going to get out of the bag and you're going to know what's in there. Okay. So, why am I saying this about the law of words? Well, you've got to understand the law of words. You've got to understand that what comes out of your mouth is what is going is is what's on the inside of you. So if you're always saying, I ain't nothing ever good gonna happen, I don't know how God's not ever gonna do anything for me, that's truly what's down inside your heart. 
So what's happening? What you've got to become aware of right now is you are not in truth. You are in error. And you're not going to walk in victory unless you get the error out of your life. So you've got to listen to what are you saying. You've got to ask yourself that question this morning. What comes out of your mouth? I mean, y'all want me to just go on? I mean, y'all are acting like you want me to just go preach something else because I'm killing you here, but I'm just telling you. I- I'm helping you here. If you want to know what's going on in your life, just listen to what comes out of your mouth. And then if it's not lining up with truth, you've got to change. I'll just go on. Okay. Here's, here's, I think it's number 10. It goes right along with these others. Truth, word, and then the law of spiritual authority. Okay? Now, I want you to go to Matthew 8, 5. It says, Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him and pleaded with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. You notice here that the, he didn't ask Jesus to do anything. He just told him a fact. My servant's at home. And the centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Okay. <clears throat> In that statement, the centurion is, is, is stating that he's not righteous, he's not worthy, but he also knows that he is a Gentile. And in those days, the Jews could not go into a Gentile's house, okay? They would become unclean if they did. So he knew that there was, he was not worthy for Jesus to come under. But the other part of that is, here's where we get a lot of religious hoopla. I just told you that you've got to have this, the law of truth in you, right? And that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're saying, Jesus, you're not, I'm not worthy that you should come under, Wait a minute, you've missed it. You're, you're already in error. Because the truth is, I just told you, he's going to present you fearfully and wonderfully, right? Truth is that you're, you've been washed by the blood of Jesus. You're not walking in truth. But in this case, it applied because Jesus hadn't died and gone to heaven yet, right? So he said, the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me just read on a little bit. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when he, Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to those who, who uh, followed, Surely I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that, that many will come from the east and from the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out out of darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And the servant was healed that same hour. So the centurion said, Man, I understand authority. I am a centurion. I have people around me. When I say go, they go. When I say come, they come. And I understand that you are the Son of God. And I understand that you have dominion over sickness. Now think about this. How did he get that truth? Only way I know is that he knew what the Old Testament promised, and he had heard the stories, and, or maybe he had possibly seen Jesus do some miracles. But right off the bat, the centurion related the Jesus and being an authority and him being authority, he related to that. And he said, I say go, and they go, and I say come, and they come. And so you're in charge of this dominion. So because you're in charge of this dominion, then... If you say it's going to happen, it'll happen, so you don't need to come to my house. And Jesus has looked at him and said, man, what a, oh, man, that guy. I've never seen, I've never seen anybody in Israel with that much faith. Are you all with me? The centurion grabbed hold of this law of spiritual authority, understood if Jesus is in charge. Now, listen to me. If Jesus is in charge and then he puts you in charge under him, does that not mean that you have all the authority coming from Jesus? 
Ephesians 1.3 says, You have been blessed with every spiritual authority in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. I mean, let's just think about this on a, on a, on a, 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 a worldly level. If you're the boss and you hire somebody to work for you and you give that person delegated authority over that job to do their job and you came in and they didn't do their job and you said to them, why didn't you do your job? They said, well, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I really had the authority to do the job. You'd say, stupid, I told you to do the job. I'm in charge. I hired you. You're in charge now. I've laid out the job description. You should go do your job. And they said, but I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like I have the authority. I don't feel like I have the power. What would you do if that was in a natural setting in your workplace what would you do with that person demoting possibly fire them find somebody that will do the job you've hired them to do right i mean if you you, you got to understand we do it all the time on this earth in our natural business we understand authority But then when it comes to the spiritual thing, we just throw our hands up and act like we don't know what, what is even right. When Jesus himself said, Ephesians 23, I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places through me. I'm, I'm blessing you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. When Ephesians 3.20 says, I want to do exceedingly abundant beyond you can even think or ask according to the power that works within you. When he says, ask anything in my name and I will do it. When he gives all these places in the Bible that he just shows you that he's in charge and he put you in charge over your kingdom called your life. Yet we sit back and say, well, I don't know. I don't know, Lord. I don't know if you, we want to do it. You know, I don't know if he's going to do anything or not. And, and, and then we just have all these debates and all these you know, go to seminars and read more books and buy more books trying to fill out this deal. When Jesus already said... I told you. I told you. I'm in charge of all the spiritual things that happen in this world. And I have blessed you and given you on charge of all the things in your life. Now listen to me. You can't take care of my life. Hear me. You can pray for me. You can ask God to bless me. You can do those kind of things. But listen to me. You can't. You, you can't. If your prayers go over there and. Lord, I just thank you today. I'm just going to pray that Pastor Robert, he's going to give away, a, you know, $100 bills to everybody in church on Sunday. I can just see it right now. Lord, he's going to do it. Just get him, Lord, get him. This ain't going to work. You can't, you can't come. It's, this isn't witchcraft. It's called spiritual authority. Hello? We're not a bunch of witches around here. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. Trying to manipulate people's lives and do things like that. But I want to tell you something. I got spiritual authority over my life, my family, my children, my grandchildren. And the enemy knows it. And I constantly bring him and box his ears and kick him back to hell and tell him, man, you're not going to ruin my life. You're not going to walk in that. Does that mean that everything in my life is perfect? Nope. Nope means there's battles and wars, and I got wars going on fronts here and there, but it doesn't make any difference because my God says that I can run against a troop. I can leap over a wall. Me. Leap over a wall. I like that one. Haven't tried it naturally yet. We're still keeping that onto the spiritual realm. I do have a coffee table that's, you know, just a regular coffee table height that I've been thinking about trying to jump up on, but ain't no walls yet. Hello? But in the spirit, that's a different thing. In the spirit, I get out my I get out my truth. I use my phone. I got it right there in notes. I got the scriptures all in there, all about my life and what's going on. And I get those scriptures out and I speak truth with words out of my mouth using my spiritual authority, and things happen. Now if you don't take authority over your life, then you're going to get stolen from continually.
right? If you take your truck and you, or your car and you go to San Antonio and you park in a parking lot and you don't lock it, and somebody goes by and steals all the stuff out of it, I mean, really? You say, oh, thieves are so terrible. They just come and steal from me all the time. Well, lock your truck. Don't park there. Whatever. Buy something. Doberman and put in there or something. Are y'all with me? In other words, you can't be stolen from from your life, and the person who's responsible if you're being stolen from is you. You're the one that has to stand up and tell the thief, no, you're not going to kill, steal, and destroy in my life. Jesus said he came to give you abundant life, and it's the thief that comes to kill, stone, and destroy. It's you that have to rise up into your households. It's you that have to speak forth the word out of your mouth, the truth out of your mouth, to what's going on around your surroundings, to speak forth unto it and say, no, that is not going to happen in my life. You're not going to steal from me. And if you don't, and you just sit in their house and let the thief come in and steal your peace, your joy, and everything else around about you. You just let the thief steal everything from you out there. And you just sit in your easy chair. And just sit there and crying in your, you know, crying. What was it? Crying your beers and your tears or tears in your beers. Wow. You're losing everything. And you don't stand up and do anything. And then get mad. Oh, God, I wish you'd do something. Look at the person beside you. Come on, quit looking at me. Look at the person beside you and say, man, he's preaching good today. Y'all are just staring at me. I feel like y'all are just boring your eyes through me today looking. Need to turn the air conditioner on or something to get it real cold in here so y'all are at least shivering. <laughs> All I'm saying is that you have to get up and you have to do something. You have to use your spiritual authority. You have to use your spiritual authority. Yet, you, Listen, if you have a business, you should be praying over your business every day. You should be setting the spiritual mood for your business every day. You should rise up and say, I declare in the name of Jesus, my business prospers. I declare my employees are the greatest employees in the world. They are blessed people. Lord, if there's any of them, there's just a devil. Get them out of here. I don't want them in there. Let them quit today. You say, well, that, what do you mean? Well, wouldn't you want that? Right? You don't need to have a bunch of... Doofus is working for you if they're not assigned to you by God. Right? If you've got, listen, folks, if you've got money and investments, you should be praying every day over the, 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 the investments that you have. And you should be praying every day that whoever's got the most sense will do something right. If you're working for somebody and you're, 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 you're employed, you're from, you should be praying for your employer. You say, Lord, bless him. Let, him let, me, let me have favor in his eyes. Lord, let, him have, let me have favor in his eyes. Let me just, Lord, every, every day when I go, let me be a good employee and give me favor in their eyes and let them bless me, Lord. Pour on the cash, Lord. I thank you that they get so wealthy they just want to throw money at me, Lord. That's the way it works. Right? You should be praying for your employer to be the most blessed person. And if your employer's not a good person, well, then maybe you should be praying for another job. You know what I'm saying? But if you're in a good place and doing everything, you need to be blessing it. You need to be a blesser. Not going there and saying, man, he makes me work so hard. I've got to get up, get down here and get out there at 8 o'clock and work all day till 5. And nobody appreciates me and loves me around here. And nothing ever good ever happens. Nothing ever comes out of that. Well, man, you ain't nothing but a mealy mouth. You know, I'd fire you. Because you're not walking in the law of truth. You're not doing what the Word says. You should say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not homeless living in a cardboard box a day. Listen, you think your life's bad? Listen, if you just go look around for a little bit, somebody's got a worse story. And you should be blessing them, not cursing them. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth should be speaking. should be blessing them, saying, Lord, I bless them. Bless them today. You're taking your spiritual authority that God has given you. You're blessing them so that, again, God can work that whole thing through and bless you. But we don't do that. I mean, you good people probably do, but I mean, that's not what the world does. The world backbites and gripes and complains and 
just just murmurs about everybody and cusses about everything and just 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 tears everything down. No wonder, because folks, I'm telling you, no wonder the spiritual environment of a of a business or a, or whatever it be is not good. Because if that's all the murmuring, griping, and complaining that's going on. Well, then how can that even flow in the things of God, in the laws that God has got established, the laws of, of spiritual authority, the laws of words, the laws of truth? It's not, there's not going to be any success because you're also then evoking what I talked about first, the law of sowing and reaping. The moment you turn around and point the finger at them and say, that person over there, he's a real stupid idiot. There was somebody right behind you that pointed the finger at you and said, that guy is a stupid idiot. Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. It's a law of God. There's no way to change it. If you speak garbage out of your mouth, somebody's speaking garbage about you. You don't want anybody to talk about you, don't talk about anybody else. It'd be a great thing for Christians to learn. I mean, it would be a great thing for Christians to learn this message. And they say, well, I just don't, you know, I'm not going to talk about so-and-so. I'm going to bless them. I'll just bless them. Keep your mouth shut. Now, I will admit it. Sometimes I get fed up. And the old man gets out of the cage. You know, he slips through one of the little cracks. And he gets out and turns loose. And I start listening to myself. And I'm like, Robert, you need to shut up. Get that guy back in the cage. I have to go get my whip out and beat that old, old man back into the cage and beat him back in there and lock the door and put a bolt on it and keep him from getting out again. It happens. But I watch myself, and I watch what's coming out of my mouth. My wife is good to tell me, <clears throat> what? And that's why I'm glad I've got a helpmate, right, that can help me. And, 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 and that we can do that because you've got to watch. That's what's coming out of your mouth, the words that are coming out of your mouth. Amen? Okay, I'm going to quit. And uh, I still have two more on this, which you're going to want to hear because it's about the law of destiny and the law of love. And you may not like the law of love, but I'll show you about the law of love and what it'll do for you. But I'm going to teach, show you about the law of your destiny because every one of you all have a destiny in here in life. Everybody listening and watching out there, you've got a destiny in life in God. And you need to know that. And you need to find it and you need to walk in it. But what I want to do is I want you to just put up your Bibles and, and, and uh, stand up, if you would, for just a second. Look at the person around you and say, man, that was painful, but it was good. <laughs> okay, now, this is what I want to tell you. Because everything I said, I mean, you know, I, I told you truth this morning. But a lot of times truth, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like that bullet that hits a piece of metal and it just ricochets off. Because a lot of times we've calloused our hearts, we've hardened our hearts, we've, we've you know, been through whatever in life and, and we've hardened our hearts and, and we just say, well, we are who we are and that's what we're going to be. My grandmother was a complainer, my mother's a complainer, and by God, I'm just a complainer, you know. And you think there's no way you can change. But what I'm asking you about today is, is I'm just asking you today to ask God, I'm going to pray for everybody here, but just open up your heart and ask God to show you who you are. And that's kind of scary. But what I want to ask you to do is I want to, I'm believing God for miracles. I'm stretching it out there today. I'm believing God for miracles. I believe your ears are going to become so sensitive to what you say out of your mouth that you're going to hear it and you're going to know what's going on in your life. Y'all want that? Okay. So, so just everybody bow your heads right now. Those of you listening and watching out there, listen to me. Receive this prayer. Hear it. Receive it. Grab it in your heart. Father, I pray over every person in here right now. I pray, Lord God, that our ears would become so sensitive that we would hear what's coming out of our mouths. That, Lord, where we're, where we're in error where we're speaking the wrong things, where we're, Lord, where we're, we've got the, 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 we're not walking our spiritual authority. We're not walking in truth. We're believing a lie, and we've been sold that lie. I just declare, Lord, that it would be revealed to each and every one of us this week. 
That, Lord, it'll pop up in our hearts. We will know what's going on. That, Holy Spirit, you will begin to just deal with us and convict us and show us. And we will hear it and we will know it. Now, Lord, I thank you that right now we all choose to become blessers. We bless our employers. We bless our businesses. We bless our employees. Lord, we just declare today that we're going to become blessers in life instead of cursers. We're going to become those that speak forth and act like you told us to, Lord, act like Christians. And, Lord, I thank you for that. Now, Lord, I give you praise for it. And I give you thanks for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now look at the person beside you and say, I, I think I can hear better. <laughs> Let me have my prayer team come down right quick. Listen, if you need prayer about anything, we're here for you. We're up here at the front. We'll pray with you. If you're listening or watching out there, man, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just call out to him right now. Right wherever you are to say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. And he will. He'll touch your life. He'll change your life forever. So take that person's hand beside you now, and Lord, I just declare a blessing over them all. I declare, Lord, as we leave this building today that they are blessed. We're going to go out in the world, and we're going to be blessings. Lord, we're not going to be cursors. We're going to be blessings. And I just declare, Lord, that we're going to run across people this week and get to tell them how great and good you are. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless the church.